Giddy on up, this ride's come to an end, but we still gotta talk about it. <laughs> Star Wars. Hey guys, this is my review for season two of The Mandalorian. It's been a few weeks since the end of the season, and I've had a little bit of time to kind of consider what I thought about the season as a whole, as in individual episodes. I can definitely say this was a good season. This was a fun, enjoyable season. It wasn't as good as season one, purely for the one aspect. This had a very formulaic system. Now, obviously this is kind of circumstantial because of how quickly this was put together. Mandalorian had a little bit more time going for it, and also it was a very welcome breath of fresh air considering the state of the Disney Star Wars movies. That magic and that love still passes over into season two. John Favaro and Dave Fioni do a fantastic job at continuing and expanding this universe that they created. Fioni just loves to bring in every and all aspects of Clone Wars and Legends lore into this show. He is trying to rebuild the Star Wars that we all knew and loved before Disney acquired it. And it's very much appreciated the love and dedication. Even random PA dude who just appeared in the background in one of those episodes, the production value went up immensely. If any of you saw the behind the scenes of how they made the first one, they were using that dome LED sort of uh, projection sort of system. And obviously that technology improved tenfold. And by the end of the first episode, I was left in complete awe at how they had managed to make a battle with a giant sand dragon thingy on a television show budget look so awesome. However, the one aspect that a lot of people have talked about, and it is a worthy criticism, is that this all felt like side quest stuff. Every episode started, progressed, and ended almost in the exact same fashion. Mando arrives somewhere, gets told to go this way, but he has to do this one thing before he gets to that next place. Once he finishes that task and gets to that place, he finds out he has to go to another place, rinse and repeat. And not to say that these episodes weren't unenjoyable. They all are fun to watch. For those who haven't seen the show at all, I can almost say you could drop them into any episode, except for maybe the last two of this season, and you would get the gist of the show, and then they would want to go back to the beginning and start and catch up to where everyone else is. It's a fantastic product to bring someone into. However, the overall narrative arc in this relies, I feel, a little bit more off of fan service than it should than actual narrative storytelling. In the first season, it all relied off of the characters. It relied off of us being introduced to these characters, finding out about them, and meeting new ones. Except in this season, Mando doesn't really get any more development besides questioning the ideologies of the extremist Mando Cree that he grew up with. There isn't much more development than that, and some of the other characters don't get much more development either. Carla Gugina's character is... there. Carl Weathers' character is... There! There's Bo-Katan, which is a fantastic addition to the show. We see her go through a little bit of her own moral complexities at the very, 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 very end. And even then it's not really answered. No one even seems to care that she got shot a bunch of times. They don't even address that she's not dead. We just have to take it for granted that she's standing there. Ahsoka was in this show, which was, again, very cool, but they didn't really give us any answers about that, and there was a clear reason as to why, because she's getting her own show. The one character who actually got quite a bit of development in this season was Bill Burr. I did not expect to say that. Bill Burr's character gets the most amount of development per character throughout this entire season. And he's in two episodes, really one. He's really just in one episode. And his character arc is more complex and gratifying than anyone else's is. Now again, that isn't a complaint to be had. It's very fun popcorn action. It's fun time to watch. You can re-watch the episodes multiple times and not get bored. But the thing that was still nagging me as we were coming into the final episodes that was prevalent the whole time is that there's almost no risk whatsoever for any of the characters. Aside from the Mando ship that gets blown up, what other loss do the good guys suffer in this season? Technically, Baby Yoda kills more good people by eating the eggs than the bad guys do. The entire final episode, I kept expecting someone to get fatally shot. I expected someone to almost die. Now, admittedly, that did lead to the cool twist, not really twist though when you thought about it, cameo that was at the end of the final episode, but I still kind of wanted to have some fear for my characters. Considering the season finale of the first season, 
we had two big main characters die. Mando almost died. In this one, I didn't feel any risk for any character until the Dark Trooper started banging on the door. But even then, it wasn't really worth anything. So in the end, those are my two complaints. The lack of character development for most of the characters, especially the main character, and the lack of risk. I was really expecting a little bit more from the Mandalorian, especially just a little bit, a little bit more about his backstory. Considering Bo-Katan brought up the whole thing that he's part of the zealots, he's part of the extremist form of Mandalorian culture. There's a whole conversation between him and her that can be had, but they didn't really do it. So it's obviously being left up for season three, and that opens up a whole other basket of issues, considering in episode three, she tells him that the whole keep the helmet on at all times ideology is a bit extreme and that can be advanced past that. And then in the last episode, she's the one who's eyeing the dark saber thinking, I've actually got to de physically defeat the Mandalorian to be the queen of Mando, even though He's just like, just take it, yo, I don't want it. And that honestly is the only kind of teaser that we have leading into season three because the story with Gorgo is over, at least for now, but it's a pretty definitive ending. And that is also a thankful change as well because as much as I love the little guy, I have to admit that he was starting to get a little old. The whole save Gorgo, get him back, have fun times with him, him get captured, go and save him again bit was getting very, very tiresome. So they gave his character arc a finale. Kind of. I'm really expecting him to make maybe some sort of surprise appearance in the next season, but mm, I'm really hoping that they just focus on Mando for season three. Another thing that I kind of do hope that they do for season three and don't burn me at the stake for saying this, I do hope they take a little bit of extra time developing this season because I feel that while this is a good season, it does suffer from not having enough time in the oven. In terms of narrative arcs for the characters, in terms of their development, things just weren't baked at all in some cases. It felt like it was a very delicious kind of pie, but the center, the very, very core of it was still a little cold. So I'm hoping that they take a little bit more time in the writer's room, Favero and Fioni, kind of craft out this whole new adventure for the Mandalorian. Maybe try and make the episodes of a little bit more connective tissue kind of hearken to that of the Clone Wars. Maybe have three episodes, two episodes, three episodes as an arc. Of course, in this situation when you have only eight episodes, you have a limited amount of time to fully develop things and fully realize all of your ambitions. So I trust that they can do that. I just hope that they spend a little bit more time padding everything out. I would say that Mandalorian Season 2 is a commendable effort. It's not as good as the first season, but that's only by a little bit. It's still very good in terms of production value, very good in terms of entertainment, very good in terms of Star Wars love and care. So in the end, I'm going to give Mandalorian Season 2 a 5 out of 7. Anyways, guys, that's my incredibly long-winded review about this season. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. And as I said to all of my Supernatural followers, make sure to check in on Christmas Day. It's not going to be in the middle. I'm going to make you guys enjoy time with your families. But I'm going to have a little present for you kind of in the later half of the day. Anyways, guys, that's all for me. I'll see you guys next time, and have a Merry Christmas. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say The Click is finally getting back together in an all-new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.